On this episode of What's Going On with Shipping, Iran seizes Chevron chartered tanker Advantage Suite in the Gulf of Oman. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So Iran, Iran, whatever you want to call it, has been in the process of seizing tankers quite frequently in the Persian Gulf. This is about the sixth one I can count on that they have seized since 2019. So I'm going to give you a little background on this probably a little bit deeper than what you're getting from the mainstream media. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's delve into this story. So here's a story from Reuters over on G Captain. Uh, go into the details here about it. So on Thursday, according to the U.S. Navy, the tanker, the Sweet Advantage, or excuse me, Advantage Sweet. Uh, this is a Marshall Island flag vessel. Marshall Islands is one of the three big open registries out there. Was seized in the Gulf of Oman by Iran. According to the Iran Army, it was seized because it had collided with an Iranian boat, injuring several crewmen. And this is what came out in Iranian state media. Now, this is Iranian state media. Two members of the boat's crew were missing, and several were injured due to the collision of the ship with the boat. Now, there are a lot of boats in and around the Gulf of Oman, small fishing boats, dows, you name it, there is a lot out there. So the potential for a collision to happen is not impossible. The question is, is this the reason that they are actually seizing the vessel? Which, again, this is what they're stating. We don't know it to be true. So this is the statement put out by the United States Central Command, uh, specifically the Fifth Fleet, the naval component of Central Command goes on here on april 27th at approximately 1 15 p.m local time the marshall islands flag oil tanker advantage suite was seized by the iran's islamic revolutionary guard corps navy while transiting in international waters in the gulf of oman uh, it goes on here there's a little addendum here that they talk about after sending a p8 poseidon maritime patrol aircraft to monitor the situation we have since been able to determine that the iranian navy the irin conducted the seizure we believe it was by helicopter uh, and that is a process they use quite a bit it is hard to board a tanker because of the sheer size of them by small boat much easier to use a helicopter and actually physically just land on the deck uh, which they can do many of these large oil tankers have areas set aside for helicopter landings to evacuate crew members goes on here from the fifth lead iran's actions are contrary to international law and disruptive to regional security and stability iran the iranian government should immediately release the oil tanker uh, one of the seizures done not too long ago was in result of the u.s seizing an iranian tanker uh, that was hauling oil supposedly in violation of sanctions Iran's continued harassment of vessels and the interference with navigational rights in regional waters are a threat to maritime security and the global economy. In the past two years, Iran has unlawfully seized at least, at least, we don't know, I think the Fifth Fleet should know exactly how many tankers they've seized, at least five commercial vessels sailing in the Mideast. All right. So that's the official statement from the United States. Now, you may be asking yourself, wait a minute, why didn't the U.S. Navy do something about this? This is a Marshall Island flag vessel. Even though the cargo is owned by Chevron, a U.S. corporation, you will not see the U.S. Navy intervene in a foreign registry vessel. It just is not going to happen, and we'll get into the details of that in a minute. This is a story over on Dryad Global. Uh, Dryad Go Global is a maritime uh, security outfit. They have a site, Channel 16, excellent source for anything going on around the world. They basically have the very similar thing. I just want to add a passage here they have at the bottom. The RGC harassing activity within the Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman is cons uh, commensurate with established pattern of behavior that has seen Iran target vessels as a result of ongoing disputes. This has previously been seen with the Iran Iranian detention of the Stena Imperio. That was a United Kingdom, an England flagged vessel, and the Hancock Chumney, South Korea, the former in retaliation for the detention of the Grace One, and the latter as a result of the South Korea freezing assets and funds related to Iran. It's interesting to note that neither the British or the Koreans did anything militarily. This was handled diplomatically, and eventually the ships were released. While Iran has yet to make a statement regarding the incident, again, they did make a statement saying that this is in res result to a collision. Uh, it remains a realistic possibility that the vessel was either boarded as a show of force in response to the first transit of a U.S. unmanned vessel through the Straits of Hormuz or the recent sanctioning by the U.S. Department of Treasury of four senior officers of the Iranian Law Enforcement 
connected to the IRGC. This is the story over in AP about the U.S. sailing its first drone through the Straits of Hormuz. Here you see the U.S. Navy sailed its first drone boat through the strategic Straits of Hormuz on Wednesday, a cru crucial seaway for global energy supplies. A trip by the L3 Harris Arabian Fox Mass 13, a 13 meter speedboat carrying sensors, drew the attentions of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard to U.S. Coast Guard cutters. Uh, accompanied the drone. Okay, <laughs> number, number one. So we're going to use these drones for sensory, for basically monitoring data. This is part of what's called Task Force 59 out in Iran. The problem we had was one of these drones, not this one in particular, but another type of drone, was grabbed by Iran. They literally just kind of grabbed it and picked it up. Uh, and so that that's the bit of the problem with these unmanned drones is that they can be screwed around with. And it kind of defeats the purpose of having an unmanned surveillance drone when you have to escort it with two U.S. Coast Guard cutters. Now, maybe it won't be a problem when we have hundreds of these things zipping around and, and doing all this uh, uh, data collection. But this is the problem with unmanned drones. It's it's basically, it, it, it's, it's you know, you, you treat it like a Roomba and you can basically just knock it out and not care about it. This is the fear I have for Amazon drones and pizza delivery drones driving down streets. People don't care about them. This is the situation thanks to marine traffic. Here is the latest position of Advantage Suite before she was, or excuse me, after she was boarded and before the AIS transponder was turned off. One of the flaws in AIS is you can literally turn it off. You can unplug it or just hit the power button and turn it off. So this system is showing a position as of 14 hours and 30 minutes ago, right here in the Gulf of Oman. The red dots and red uh, ship figures are tankers. And you can see exactly how crowded the Gulf of Oman is. It is a lot of traffic. Probably the ship has been moved from here up to the Bandar Abbas region. This is the big naval base here in Iran. This is what they did with seized tankers before. So that's where we've probably seen that vessel move to. Here is Marine Traffic's details on the vessel, a little bit more about her. Uh, built 11 years ago over at Samsung Shipbuilding Heavy Industries in Korea. The owner is SBD Financial, we'll talk about it in a second. Viking Shipping is the uh, manager for it. So the vessel is Marshall Island flag. As I mentioned to you before, the biggest registries in the world today are open flag registries. Panama, Liberia, Marshall Islands. People register vessels there because it's cheap. There's little upfront cost. There's very little oversight provided by the registries in some cases. Again, waiting for the Marshall Island, excuse me, for Panama to issue the report on Ever Given going ashore in the Suez two years ago. But more importantly, you get cheap overhead costs. You can pay for foreign crews. But what you don't get is the Panamanian, Liberian, and Marshall Island Navy coming to your rescue when you get seized by the Iranians. And again, the U.S. is not going to come and seize this vessel. It's just not. The U.S. didn't intervene during the tanker war in the 80s and the 90s uh, when Iran was attacking ships until they were U.S. flagged. That's the only time you see it. We didn't do it with Somalia until it was U.S. flag vessel, the Maersk Alabama and Tom Hanks. You have to save Tom Hanks, Captain Phillips. Uh, you have to do it. All right. Where this gets a little bit interesting here is the fact that the owner of the vessel is this outfit, the Shanghai Pudong Development Bank, SPDB. This is a bank located in China. It is a Chinese bank that owns the vessel. So you have seized a vessel that has cargo from Chevron, a U.S. company, and you have a ownership of this company that is basically the owner of the company is, is a Chinese bank. Uh, that may cause some issues. I'm not sure how China is going to react to it. It'll be interesting to see how fast diplomatic pressure is exerted by China against Iran to release the vessel. So a little bit of background on this. Again, you don't get a lot of this from the mainstream media. They don't have the time to go in depth, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of background on the ownership and where the ship's going. Ship was in route from, uh, was coming from Kuwait, heading to Houston, Texas, which sounds weird, but a lot of oil is shipped into Texas for refineries because you need the right type of oil in our refineries. And the problem is we have not built refineries largely since 1977. 
And so we literally have the case where in Houston, Texas, ships loaded with oil are sailing out while ships loaded with oil are sailing in. And if that doesn't sound idiotic, I don't know what is because it is absolutely stupid. But this is the problem we have. We are not building refineries. We can't refine the right oil in this country. And therefore, we have to export oil and import oil, even though we have enough oil. That's the crazy energy policy we have and shipping policy. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? Well, hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon, become a monthly or yearly subscriber to the channel. You all make this possible for me to put these videos together. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off unless I get seized by the Iranian Navy in the process. Until then, see you later.